So we know that seasonal data consists of a trend, seasonality, and irregularity. Well, sometimes our goal is to figure out what the underlying trend is so that we can isolate this trend effect and leave out the seasonality and irregularity. But sometimes we're interested in seeing what the seasonality is like, for example. So what do we do? Well, we can use the decompose function in R to help us. Um, but before we do this, there's a very important distinction that we have to make, and that is between additive and multiplicative data. So in an additive model, the components are simply added together. So a point in time in our time series data will consist of a trend plus seasonality plus the residuals. But in multiplicative models, the components are multiplied. So in this case, we have a trend times seasonality times the residuals. So here you can see what the different functions are like for these two models. Now, this is important for us to know because as we use the decompose function, we need to specify if we're looking at additive or multiplicative data so that it doesn't make incorrect seasonality estimates. So let's see how we decompose seasonal data in R. So the data set here that we have is called CO2, which is a built-in data set in R. And it shows the atmospheric CO2 concentration measurements taken in Hawaii between 1959 to 1997. And here, if you look at the plot, you see that the seasonality is basically constant over time. Um, so we know from this that it's additive data and it's not multiplicative data. Um, so what we do is we use the following function. which is called the decompose function. And you can see here that we specify an X and then we can also decide what the type is. So we can say it's either additive or multiplicative. Um, if we don't specify this type, the default function will just be additive. So since we have additive data, we don't even have to specify this. We can just feed it our data set and that's all. So that's what I'll do and then we plot it. So I'll make this a little bit bigger for you so it's easier to see. The first panel that we have here is our original data. So this is the same thing as what we just plotted, which is just our data set. Um, the second panel shows the estimated trend. So from this data set that we have, what does the decompose, decompose function see as the overall trend of the data? And you can see that it's pretty easy to see that this is indeed probably the trend that we, uh, that consists in this data set. The third panel shows the seasonal component. So you see just the fluctuations isolated from the trend and from the random fluctuations, which are shown in the bottom panel. So this is all the variation in the data. So it's great that R can completely decompose our data set for us and we can exactly see what the trend is and exactly see what the seasonal component is. So it will be very easy for us to identify these as we need. Now, if we look at the following data, we can see that our seasonal variations are not constant over time. Actually, when our time increases and our trend goes up, we see that the seasonal variations also increase. So this is clearly multiplicative data because the seasonal variation is proportional to our trend as opposed to just constant over time. And this actually makes a lot of sense because this is our air passengers data. So this is the number of air passengers that fly over time. And maybe um, in the first year we have maybe 10,000 air passengers. And during our seasonal variation, we can see that in our holiday seasons there are more people flying. So maybe there are a thousand additional people flying. But once we have, for example, 100,000 people flying, we don't expect to see only 1,000 additional people in those holiday seasons. We expect a lot more. So here it makes a lot of sense that we're looking at multiplicative data. So when we use the decompose function here, we have to specify that we're dealing with multiplicative data. And here you can see we do that by specifying the type. So we use our air passengers data. And we specify here that our type is multiplicative. Now, if you plot this, 
we can see that it actually accurately um, identifies that this is multiplicative data because our seasonality here is percentage based as opposed to just being absolute value. So um, you can see that here you can, it, it goes between um, 0.8 and 1.2 and these are percentage changes as opposed to absolute changes. Now we could also use a log function to do with multiplicative data and then paste that log function or our log data into this decompose function because if we log our data it becomes additive and I'll show you that real quickly. Here we can see that our plot is no longer multiplicative, but it shows additive data because our seasonal variations are constant over time. And now if we plug in this uh, log function or this log data into our decompose function, we don't have to specify that we're dealing with multiplicative data. Here you can see that it like it shows our log data in the first panel and then here this is actually additive so now we're no longer dealing with this um, percentage change but this is just the constant change that we see in this uh, seasonal variation but um, this is a little bit of a longer route to take to deal with this multiplicative data just specifying that your type is multiplicative should be more than enough. Just to show you what happens if you do not specify you're dealing with multiplicative data, if you do, I prepared this for you. Uh, here we're dealing again with our air passengers data, which is multiplicative data. And on the left side, um, this function thinks that we're dealing with additive data. And on the right side, uh, our function thinks that we're actually dealing with multiplicative data, which is right. And you can see that for these two, the trends are the same but the seasonality is different. As you can see here on the left side, it ranges between negative 50 and 50, which shows that these are just additive, uh, constant changes um, that it assumes in the seasonal data. And on the right panel, we see that it's dealing with percentage changes instead, which is actually what you're supposed to do when dealing with multiplicative data. And you can also see that the random panel uh, differs quite significantly from the right side and the left side and that is because on the left side it assumes that our seasonal data is um, constant so everything that goes beyond that actual number has to be included somewhere so it just assumes that that is all random noise even though it is part of the seasonality so on the right side we actually see the right um, uh, kind of random data and we see that it doesn't have to make up for these additional seasonal uh, outliers that we see on the left side included in this random panel. So to recap, when we want to decompose seasonal data, we first have to find out if the data is additive, which is when we add our time series components, or multiplicative, which is when we multiply our components. And if it is additive, you can just go ahead and use the decompose function without specifying a type. But if it's multiplicative, we can either log our data or specify the type in our decompose function in R. And just remember when you do that, that in additive data, our seasonal panel is shown as the same unit of measurement as our original time series data. But in multiplicative data, the seasonal component is expressed as a percentage or a ratio that is relative to the trend.